We left off 716. left off third paragraph. It said, in terms of human relationships, a person, does a person endless favors? His mindset is only to do good for that person. There's a family relationship between that person, the person's father, his grandfather, long, long generations of relationship, positive. As a normal human being, how do you feel towards that person, towards his family? Very positive not because of the, the nature of the relationship and the closeness is nothing which is too difficult for you to do for them. But yet, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, where he values us, we have relationship with through the others and so on and so forth, and he's the endower and does chesed, he's interested only in our best, our welfare, yet we don't feel, have that positive feeling towards him as you would feel to a, to a mere mortal. This is what he pointed out. So what does he say? He says, Hokit Zohi. Wake up, my brother. Wake up. Minashen Azos from this sleep. And remove from your heart the cover of your inclination. Which he covered. The heart is all the emotions, the feelings. Al Chihibdil Bainko Bain Or Sikho. We ended with this last time where he separated between you and the illumination of your mind, your intelligence. It's like a spider who spins a web at the window. If the spider keeps spinning that web, what happens to the web? It gets thicker and thicker. It gets thicker and it seals the window. The window is sealed. To the point where it prevents the light to filter into the house. That's how thick the web is. When the spider initially starts spinning that web, it's weak and it's very thin. But as it continues, yes, it strengthens and it gets thicker. And it prevents. The light of the sun from filtering through does not come into the house. And the house is totally dark. You know, we can appreciate with this, this, this marshal that he's giving the Hosod, which the Rambam cites, the Hosod Tshuva, is he says, just as this Choli Ha'guf, as this physical illness, this spiritual illness. What's the possible from Yeshaya? And Yeshaya says to the Jews before the Kurban Abayis, Omrim ala choshech or ala or choshech. They refer to light as dark, darkness as light, and light as darkness. But if the light is darkness, How, if, it, if, it's, if it's light, if things are absolutely clear and obvious, but yet you don't see it, it's darkness. This is the web that the, spy, that the Yitzhar spins, covers our heart, which is our emotion, our feeling, our natural sense of understanding right and wrong we're totally oblivious to it that's exactly what he's talking about that the, the light of day does not penetrate the person's mind or anything else you know there's an expression you know, many expressions we've been using the handwriting's on the wall right? handwriting's on the wall why don't you wake up people don't wake up what's going on right even on on a, on, on a national security level there's so many things going on what are, what are we going to wake up with when it's going to be too late Right? Breaches of security, endless. And they're busy with other things. Well, why don't you wake up? That, that's exactly what we're talking about over here. People hear what you say, and somehow the person can't process it. To relate, to understand the seriousness of the moment. That's the Yitzhara. That's the inclination. It totally numbs and desensitizes the person's sense of right and wrong. Like a person who grew up as a farm boy, 
He hasn't been to the farm in 60 years. Goes out to the country, he says, smells the manure, and it uh, brings back unbelievable memories. You understand? Where he's coming from. Another person smells it as a stench. This person brings back memories, positive memories. That's, that, that's this world, you know? The eights are, uh, this is great, this is unbelievable. People tattooed from head to toe. Oh, this, is, this is unbelievable. It's something which, which is shocking. You can't believe what, you, what you're looking at, right? It's, it's physical defacement. <coughs> they don't see it. Why don't they see it? Why do we see it? Why, do, why do they, don't, don't they see it? It's an indication that generation is totally uh, addicted at a level with the beyond recovery to that degree. To, what, to perversion and everything which has no relevance to decency. That's, that's what we're talking about over here. It's only gotten this bad, only in, he, what he's talking about is more on the spiritual level. You could have decency, everything else, but yet still, you don't see the light of day. Because he's talking about real spirituality. Yeah, I'm saying even even on, on a responsible level, as a human being, we're not talking about Hashem or spiritual. We're not talking about that. Yeah. No, that's about the idolatry. This is the people. This, this is the people themselves, society. You know, we're talking about destructive behavior, literally destructive. V'chein masa yetz the influence of the Yetzer in your heart. The Yetzer initially is very weak. You know, you raise a child. A little boy, five years old. He's taught all the faiths. He's taught a lot of Moshe. He's told stories. You say uh, to, the, to the child, uh, who, who wrote the Torah? He says, Hashem. He says, Say to him, uh, maybe somebody else. Who else will? Of course, I should. Right. <laughs> this is the way the child responds. An old person says, "You know, well, it's, it's not so simple." He has to he has to get involved intellectually to explain it. This and that. The story many years ago. It's many years ago, David Tesson. He was a person, a very wealthy man in uh, in Los Angeles, maybe Beverly Hills. Came about Shuba. And he joined the North Black Shul, and they needed a rabbi. So the first thing they did him, they did, they took this wealthy man who barely knew anything about Yiddish men. He said, New Bal Tshuva, and they put him on the search committee for a rabbi. So he asked himself a question. If I would know what a rabbi is, okay, so they put me on the search committee. But what do I know what a rabbi is? The, the answer is he understood because he has money, they put him on the search committee. So he says, he doesn't know what a rabbi is, but he, one thing he knows, the rabbi has to believe in God. That's one thing he knows. That's, that, that, that's basic for to be a rabbi. In North Dak Shul, he has to believe in God, okay? So they start interviewing the candidates for the, for the job. First person comes, and they say, so what, Mr. so what would you like to ask the, the candidate? He said, he, he had one question. Do you believe in God? Okay? So right away, the person would get into a whole philosophical discussion. What is God? Is it a concept? Is it a reality? Is this? And finally says, yes, of course I believe in God. And everyone, finally, there's a person that came, and he says to the Kevin, he says, uh, do you believe in God? He says, of course I believe in God. He says, you got the job, and that's the end of your story. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you don't have to beat around the bush. Initially, the Yetzirah is cholosh. It's, it's obvious. You look at this world. How did this world come about? It came about by itself? Well, the Big Bang, and you don't even know what the Big Bang means. Well, I read an article... 30 years in New York Times, they explained what the Big Bang was. Oh, so you're an, expect, an expert at the Big Bang. Maybe you hit your head in the wall by accidentally. That's the Big Bang. How do you know what the Big Bang means? Well, it's matter, it, it, the, 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 the confluence of this, and you don't even know what you're talking about. No, but it's the Big Bang. Yeah, it's, it's all nonsense. Because, and, and if you see it as that, you say, of course, how could have this come about? The, 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 the ex conciseness, the exactness, the symmetry, the balance. It's, it's impossible. 
the genius is beyond genius. Well, it all came about by itself. Well, but of course it took so many billions of years. It couldn't happen otherwise. Does that make sense? Is it logical? person says, uh, how did you become so wealthy? He's Forbes number three. I'll tell you a story. I had a bottle that I, which I purchased when I was in the Foreign Legion. And I brought it home. I left it close for, four, for 40 years. I opened the thing. The genie came out. And that's how it came number three on Forbes. He said, what, who else are you talking to? You think we're going to you going to commit us to a mental uh, institution, right? Would you believe it? Of course not. It's nonsense, right? But everything else, which is endless more than that, of course, that's what it is. And you're not intellectual unless you see it that way. To be continued.